Okay. All right. Well, welcome, ladies. Um, obviously, you're here because you're new to Science Olympiad or relatively new to Science Olympiad, and you're looking for uh, information on what to do to get started. So, when you're organizing a new team, um, some of the things you need to look for are to organize our scheduling, your money, your training, the dates. All the dates you can always find on the Macomb um, SO.org in the elementary section. Um, I recommend that you head to that website frequently. Um, there, it's consistently updated and it has a lot of important information for you. That's going to be your go-to place for all of the information um, that you're going to need. And all of the things you'll see in this presentation are also on that website that could be downloaded um, for you to use. And if shout, I can't see you right now, so just shout out if you um, have a question. So this is the website, um, and again, you can download um, a handbook for yourself, or you can download the rules for yourself. But this this is going to be your go to place for any information that you might need. You, or you haven't shared it yet, I think. I haven't. No, I don't see it. Can you guys no. see the website? No. I oh, I didn't share the website. I'm just sharing yeah. the PowerPoint. No website. You were Powerful. talking about this is the website, but we didn't see the website. Oh, I was on the, the PowerPoint presentation. Okay. It's got the website up on the top. Okay. www.macombso.org. I didn't see the PowerPoint either. No. You can't see the PowerPoint either? No. Uh oh, hold on. Just your face. <laughs> just my No. There we go. Slideshow right there. Okay, sorry. See, yeah. I need my own. Okay, there we go. <laughs> now, can you see the the slideshow? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yep. I'm glad I have my tech man on a call. <laughs> All right. Me too. So <laughs> oh my gosh, it's weird talking to myself basically because I can't see you guys. So anyway, this is uh, basically what head coaches do. You organize your team, you schedule, you find the um, financial resources, um, information for training your coaches and your students, the important dates that you'll need, um, and competition. And the dates include the competition dates and all of your responsibilities. So that website that, you, that I referred to, um, I'm not gonna try changing my screen because I'm having a hard enough time sharing it. Um, is the H is the www.macombso.org. And since you're elementary, always make sure you hit the elementary tab when you get to that site because it's secondary and elementary. And any information that you're going to need, you'll find there. All of the things you'll see in this PowerPoint presentation, um, the notes and letters that I have in here are all up there for you to download and change according, you know, making the changes that you need. You can download a handbook for yourself. You can download the rules um, for yourself as well. But this website is a great place to find all of the information that you're going to need. So you'll find again, once again, when you get there, you want to click on the elementary link to the of the website. You'll see that that's on the um, there's a tab at the top. It will give you the calendar. There's it lists the events. It lists um, any workshops like this is the new head coach workshop, but there is a head coach workshop coming up. You'll find information there about that. You can ask, ask questions and receive answers. There's maps to the college, um, lots of resources, the rules to all of your um, events. You'll find information, you even find information from past tournaments, um, lots of um, lots of information um, to go that you'll find on this website. So you're the head coach. So your job is to find to get for a team. You need your participants, the the kids. You also need your event coaches. Um, in the past, I've always had parents um, as my head coaches. Um, but you can also have um, high school honor students sometimes need um, tutoring hours. Um, for 
for themselves. You older siblings, high school siblings, um, other teachers in the building. So um, what you, you have to do what works best for you in finding your head coaches. And now again, times are very strange right now. And it's it might be a little more difficult this year. So though this deadline is already passed, but um, I'm sure that if you haven't registered your team, you can by still register. If you were a team that paid last year already, your fee is waived, it was carried over and you don't need to pay um, any uh, money. And as soon as you are registered, you will get um, a team number. And again, you can find your team number on macombso.org. So you'll find your team number there as well. And again, shout out if you have any questions. Would we be able to? Go ahead. Would we be able to pay definitely our previous school head coach paid last year? That's a good question. If was your school registered to participate last year? Yes. Then you you would be paid already. Yes. Okay. okay. But if you want to double check, John Ogden would be the person that you want to email. But if okay. you if Hevel, you're Hevel, right? Uh, Emerson. Emerson. Okay, that's Ms. Kathy I'm talking to. Or Sean. Yeah. So again, I can't see you. Um, yeah, if, you're, if your team was registered and paid for last year, then your registration is um, already paid for for this year, too. Okay, just wanted to double check. Thank you. Yeah, actually, actually, I do believe that he just recently updated the website with, all the teams that are registered for this year and it has the schedule for this year. So before you call John, you might want to check the website and see if you're on that list. Yeah. All right. So now team organization is going to be a little bit tricky this year because in all the years that I did it, I did it in person and this year, it's going to be tougher because I know pretty much all of the elementaries or in Macomb County are back to virtual. So again, all the flyers that you'll see, the notes that are coming up in this, you can download those. And instead of being able to hand them out um, to your students, uh, you're going to have to um, send things out um, digitally or virtually and have virtual meetings. So usually I would send flyers to students and get, you know, a, f a feel for who wanted to participate and give a test after school. But obviously we can't do that right now. So you might ask your principal if he can share a video um, about Science Olympiad, um, if you have a science teacher to generate interest and have have them send out information with your contact information. So once they contact you, then you have your, their contact information because that's not information the schools can give out um, to you. But if the principal sends out information and they contact you with interest, then you can give them the letters um, and um, everything that you need um, for our organizing your team and gathering your students. Um, there's pictures um, on the that will be on the website. They're of open house kits, and what these kits are is um, basically a um, a picture of everything that pertains to each event. So they used to be passed around to each school to display, so kids could come by and see them. But because of the times now they will, um, pictures are going to be uploaded to the website. So and so you can direct your students to the website to look at the pictures and the descriptions of the events so they can get an interest and get a feel for what they might be interested in competing in. in. Um, and again, when you're communicating and when you get the people that are interested, make sure you com com communicate to them the date of the county competition. There's a um, there'll be a virtual workshop for your coaches. Again, everything is virtual or digital. Um, so that's the biggest part is we can't do anything in person. So that's the hardest part about gathering your team this year. If it wasn't hard already, it just got a little bit harder. Here's a picture. This is just, this was our sample of what the um, kits are, but the, the pictures will um, be a single like 
they'll get your picture of anatomy with just anatomy or just charged up or just amazing arthropods. So they'll have pictures of all of 16 events and what those events um, consist of. And again, another great place to go is to the um, Facebook page, um, the mm -hmm. elementary Facebook page, because there's a lot of pictures of the events there. So the kids can scroll through and look at the pictures of the kids actually competing in the events. So you can, that's another way to, to see what each event's about. Um, these are letters that I'd sent home to my parents um, and the dark parts were the, the, um, the highlighted dates because I'd always go in and highlight the dates of the practice tournament, which there will not be any practice tournaments, but the date of the county competition, the date of the um, workshop for the coaches, and basically making a commitment. It's a commitment between the parents and the students. Um, that was my, my goal was to get parents and students working together. Um, that was what I required. You as a coach can have your own requirements. Now you might, you know, it's hard because parents are trying to work from home and work, watch their kids at school at home too. So you're gonna have to juggle it and play it by ear according to the times right now. So these are downloadable and you can change dates, change the names, change anything that you want. We good so far? Okay. Yep. Um, yeah. All right, you can have up to 16 students um, on a team. Um, some districts um, or some schools have checked that they wanted a second team and that's already been, that's already on the web website as well. Um, so when you're selecting kids, if you already had a team last year, um, I would try to contact that head coach, the head coach that was last year, and see if you can get that contact information, first of all. Um, so you know which students were on the team last year. Um, and then that gives you a starting point because then you can find out if the kids that were on the team last year that are still in your school would like to return this year. And then you know how many kids you need to fill your team if you can get a full team. And don't, you know, times are, again, weird to say the least. So if you can't get 16 students, just get as many as you can and you go with it from there. Um, and again, because of privacy um, issues, if you don't already, if the coach from last year doesn't have already the contact information from the past teams or from last year's team, you, um, you're going to have to have the principal email out some interest forms for you so they can contact you because we, as a teacher, I couldn't, um, I would get requests from parents. Oh, can I have phone numbers because they want, would want to do, um, play dates or whatever, I can't, you can't give out that information. If the parents email you with their information, then, then you're good. So you're gonna have to use your administrator in your building to help you get um, the information out to the students and the parents to contact you so then you can gather their contact information. Um, so again, your best bet is to contact last year's coach and see who you have still on your team um, and go from there. Um, you, you, and if you can email teachers, if you know the teachers in your building, you can email the teachers and ask them to send out these forms for you and to the, their students. And, you know, you can even, you know, ask, for, you know, they can ask kids if they're interested in Science Olympiad and they can print off, well, they can't, they have to do it digitally because nobody's in school right now. I retired at the right time. So anyway, <laughs> again. <laughs> I know, I am like, I would go bizarre, bonkers right now. So again, you're gonna have to have somebody on the school side helping you out because we, you're not with the students. If I don't know if either one of you are teachers in your buildings, but it would be difficult if you're a teacher and if you're a parent, it's gonna be even more so. But don't give up, do your best, we'll get there. Um, there are videos available on macombso.org to show um, the students and coaches. So if you get are generating interest from students or you're getting contact from parents saying their, their child might be interested, refer them to the website um, because there are a bunch of videos that they can um, look at. Again, there's a bunch of photos they can look at. 
Um, and the videos are from the, some of them are from the kids' perspective, former Olympians. There's videos from the older kids because this is a great way to keep your kids interested in science. And I had a son, he was in elementary, skipped middle school, went back to it in high school and ended up getting scholarships to Macomb um, from Science Olympiad. So it, it is worth their while to continue on with, with the Science Olympiad. Um, just one note though, some of the videos are a little bit older, so some of the rules might be different. So when you're looking for your rules for your um, events, always check the website because that's, you'll get the current information and all the rules have been updated. So that's the website is the rules for the current years where you wanna make sure you're getting them. Again, um, I, the green is all the changes. But these were notes that I would send home um, or Ruth would send home to, to the kids and to um, get the parents involved um, because it's if you have it's the kids are all the kids like to do it, but you can't do it alone. You as a head coach can't coach individual events. Um, all of them, at least I did for a couple of years because I had two kids on the team for a couple of years. So I did coach events. But once my kids were off the team, I didn't coach any more individual events. I just organized. But my rule always was if you have, for every child you had on the team, you had to coach that many events. So I did have triplets one year and those parents coached three events. Um, but you're gonna have to do everything virtually um, this year. So you might have to set up Zoom meetings or this is a Teams meeting. So again, it's going to be a little bit more of a challenge, but basically the same concept of generating the interest. These were just cutesy notes that I sent home congratulating them for being on the team. And if they didn't make it, because there was a few years I had way more kids try out than I did and that I had spots on the team. So um, these were just letters that I sent home. And even the ones that didn't make it, I was they were encouraged to try again the next year or if they were going on to middle school to check out middle school. Yeah, this basically when Ruth and I were looking at these the other day summed up everything this year. <laughs> um, not just scheduling, but everything. <laughs> so, Once you get past scheduling, it gets much better. <laughs> yeah. Well, this year we might have to get past or getting team kids together. Yeah. So what I would do to schedule kids is I, had them fill out interest forms with the events, rating the events. I had the coaches rate the events as to one being their favorite and 16 being, don't you dare give me that event. I can't stand that. And then I would try to coordinate um, the students in their most popular events. Ruth would have kids, they, she would have a meeting in school and the kids would sign up on their own. Um, you just have to be careful if they're in more than one event that the times of the events don't overlap because when you're at the count at the county you can't change you can't say oops i for, i can't go can i go a different time because that won't be happening and especially this year with all the special rules there's only a certain amount of kids in any given area at any given time um but again there's events that are just building events like the crash car there's a lot of study events um, problem solving events. Um, some, if you, if the kids are able to get together, you can have students that have been on an event paired with somebody that's new. This year, you might be stuck with um, having, if you have siblings in a family that are interested, you might have be stuck having the siblings be on the team uh, teams together because then they can practice together. So you're going to have to play it by ear and figure out how it's best going to work. Um, all You don't have to have two students in every event. The rule is you can only have two with the exception of water rockets, um, you can have three. Um, but you don't have to have two students in an event. You can have one student in an event. Um, you can even have one student that has practiced that event and then on the day of the event, have a buddy go in and just be the recorder. So you have the student taking the test and saying, okay, I'm on this front, mark this answer, mark this answer, mark this answer. 
you could do it that way um, so they can study by themselves and practice by themselves and just have a buddy go in and do the recording on the, the score sheet. Registered is in this meeting. Okay. What was that? Somebody's just joined. Oh. Is that what I heard? John is on. Oh. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, no more pressure. Oh. I was just looking to see if, if Sean was in attendance since yes. she registered her team today. Her yeah, Sean, team. Sean is here, but Brandy did not sign up yet. Great. Okay, and I said this was really weird because I'm looking at my PowerPoint and that's the only thing I can see on my screen right now. <laughs> so I'm talking to myself, basically. <laughs> and you're doing a fine job. Thank you. So again, you you don't have to have the two students on a, um, studying together on an event um, if you if it's impossible. Um, you, you, it's not a rule that you have to. It's only a rule that you can't have more than two. Um, for each event, except again for water rockets. So some things to think about when you're scheduling students into events. And happy students make for a happy team. So when you're scheduling, normally I would tell you that watch for the times you have at the county and the district so that when you're scheduling them, nothing overlaps, but the county tournament is the only tournament you're going to have this year, so you only have to make sure that the kids are not in events that um, overlap at the county tournament this year. Actually, that makes it a whole lot easier. Yeah, it does. It does make so, it a lot Jennifer, easier. If I can comment for a moment. Sure. Uh, I think there's a high probability there won't be a practice tournament this year, but I haven't given up on that 100%. Um, having the college cancel uh, availability of their facility uh makes it more difficult if we have a practice tournament i think there will only be one rather than having individual uh tournaments by district um but so i haven't given up but it well we'll see okay <laughs> it's easier to tell them that there will be than there are none to <laughs> yeah. okay this so is... if, when when they're in in recent years we have made sure that the schedules <laughs> of the individual practice tournaments uh, also matched the uh, county tournament. Uh, it doesn't add to the scheduling problem, uh, which is the point we're making, so. So when you go on to um, MacombSO.org um, under elementary tab, you will find the schedule for this year's tournament. Um, this is a draft, so you don't want to use this one. This is from 2010, so obviously you don't want to use this one. Um, and it, it looks similar to this. Um, you'll see the the event listed to the left. You'll find the um, the times at the top and the team numbers, what slots they're in. So that's why it's very important to know what team number you are. So when you kids are scheduled in events, you can see if their events are overlapping. So make sure you do know what team number you are um, before you, um, set in stone what events your kids are going to be in. So you don't, you don't want them to practice, 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 and then, oops, they overlap and they can't do both of them. That's pretty disappointing. It's actually it's happened. The, the uh, schedule for this year is much, much simpler than what this looks like. Uh, and the schedule is available on the uh, MacombSO.org website. So you'll see it. It looks much simpler. So don't let the scare you. This is it's, yeah, it's this this is this is from a normal tournament with eighty about eighty teams, and this year we don't have quite as many. So yeah, this year's schedule does look a little bit different, a little less intimidating. So I guess it's a good thing you're starting this year because the schedule is a little bit easier for you to do. So if you go to the website, the very bottom one, uh, the bottom uh, left side of the screen. On, it says schedule and it's right there easy for you to find and it comes up it will allow allow you to print um a pdf so you can print it so it will be printable for you too and again this is just some ideas when you're um scheduling um i would go and highlight my team their um where their events were so that i knew what what times 
my teams competed, competed in each event. But again, this is an old one. You want the new one at macombso.org. But this makes it really easy for you to see which events are at the same time. And obviously you can't put the same kid in two different events that happen at the same time. Yeah. You don't, like I said, you don't want to do that because that's so disappointing if that you don't notice it until the last second, because that can't be changed at the count. That schedules that schedule and you can't go in and say, well, my team, I didn't know. Can they come at this time? And you couldn't do that under normal circumstances. And this year it's even more so because of the restrictions and the number of students allowed in any area at any given time. Um, this is a the the practice we used to have. Well, we I'm I'm saying we used to. We will have them again. Each district had practice tournaments. This was just an example of Chippewas, and again, it was laid out the same way. And you had to make sure that your events didn't overlap. That if they were an event that worked in Chippewa, that they had to work with the county as well. So you don't have to worry about this this year. This was um, what I would hand out to the kids. Um, just so they could give me a list of what their favorites were. And I gave one to the parent, the coach, and I gave one to the, the students. Um, that was how I did it because I'm very visual and I had, I would put things in front of me and organize that way. And what I would do when I had uh, kids and parents rank those is the kid and the parent would tend to talk to each other and figure out, you know, I really, really, really want to be in water bottle rockets. So they would both put that down as a number one. And, yeah. and that way they, you know, have a better chance of actually getting it if the parent is willing to coach it and the kid wants it. Yeah. Yeah, I would see that when they were doing, because I would have these, have, have them fill these out at our meeting. And I would see that, that the kids would be like, well, and they kind of talk their parents into putting that down. So, yeah. There was a couple of times where a child's favorite was like the parent's worst nightmare. Um, but my philosophy was always make the kids happy because if you have happy kids, they're easier to coach. Yeah, yeah. So this was just a couple ways I laid out the information for the parents to see. I laid it out by event on the one side with the, who was in it and the coach. And then I laid it, I gave the assignments by um student and then what events the students were in and I always put the times down so then I had the times in my face all the time so I would knew knew if anything was overlapping with the kids schedule and this is where I sat with pencil and paper and took their um their rating sheets and penciled them in before I typed it up and sent it so this is just two ways that I would present the information to the parents so they would have it um again Happy kids first, and then the coaches were second. I play that way every year. The kids came first. Um, and when you're thinking about it, if you're, you know, if you had a team last year, you want to go back to your the head coach from last year and look at the kids you have coming back, what events they were in. Um, hopefully, you'll get for every student you get, you'll get their parent as well to help you coach. But if you can't, you can look for. Um, Past Science Olympiads, Olympians, even middle school students can help out. NHS students, they need their community service hours. When you're looking at your coaches, you might have coaches that have expertise in certain events, um, like your doctors and nurses would be great for anatomy. Um, your engineers would be good for like the bridging the gap or the car crash cart. So you kind of want to, Sometimes that works. Sometimes you get somebody that's really into it and the kids are going nuts, but that helps you out because then you have somebody that's um, knows kind of what their, the information is. Um, I'll tell, I got a lot of questions from parents that were first time on the team and they're like, I don't know what to do. I've never done this before. I just told them to relax, you know, get the information when you have the coaches information, you'll get the information you need. And, you know, it's a learning experience for everybody. And especially this year, it's it's a learning experience for all of us. Um, so, but happy kids first. That was, you want that. There's a lot of that will, uh, a lot of schools that require that the at least one parent or older sibling 
coach an event. If your child is in the event, you have to coach something. I never did that, but I got most of my coaches from the parents or from the families. And, you know, sometimes I had even grandpas come and coach. So, uh, you know, we found it somewhere along the line. We found somebody for each event. Yeah, because if, if the kids are on the team and the parents aren't willing to coach, that leaves you with a lot of holes. And that leaves some parents picking up the slack and co coaching, you know, two or three events. And that gets really stressful. And then those are the parents that are least likely to return again next year. So if you can get either a parent, a sibling, or a grandparent for every student you have on the team, you'll be good. Um, well, this screen, I took out all the information I had on there because uh, scheduling practices, where and when will they meet? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I have no information for you for that. Um, if you have siblings that are on the team in, in the same events, they're good because they can meet at their house. You might have um, little bubbles of kids that um, are in their group that they see on a regular basis. So that's where I kind of have to leave you hanging on your own because I don't know what to tell you um, about. <laughs> and, and I hate to say do virtual because the kids are in school virtually all the time. And I've, and I, you want hands on working with materials and not sitting in front of a computer screen for Science Olympiad on top of everything else. So. Yeah. And some of them don't lend themselves to being virtual. I mean, mm -hmm. if you can build a rocket, you can't do that virtually. So, so can I, may I uh, jump in for a moment? Sure. Yeah, so I would say some of the information they might be collecting from their team has to do with what expectations the families have in terms of maintaining, you know, like 100% virtual. Uh, so if you have some families who are comfortable adding one more to their own family bubble and willing to meet in person, those events might be more appropriate for events where you really do have to get together, like Crash Car Expert, where kids have to build things, or mystery, or uh, bridging the gap, uh, where where devices have to be built. Um, so that's water rockets. Water rockets, right? So for those kinds of situations, you might at there might be some questions that you would only ask this year about what families' preferences are. I would also observe that teams, after they've had a chance to meet a few times in person, uh, become much more functional. So, uh, and I'm experiencing this. I'm currently coaching students at the high school level right now for one of the high school teams. And we've met in person, and uh, one of my events, uh, we're switching to a more virtual format. And so, once people get to know each other a little bit, uh, it changes how well they can work together. And so it doesn't have to be one, only one approach. Uh, it could be it could be a mix of approaches uh, within an event team. So and when when we did meet together uh, for a few times, we were careful to you know follow good uh, practices of wearing masks and washing hands and other things. Uh, and so there's ways you can do that safely as well. Thank you. Okay, so once I did get all of my parents and my team members um, and I had all their contact information that they provided me, then I did, um, I made a roster so that everybody had everybody's information and um, then these are, these are the things, I would email these things out to parents for myself, but again, I, that information was provided to me by the parents. Um, you can't ask the administrators and the teachers at the school to give it to you. It has to be provided to, to you by the parents because of privacy. But this just gave people the information they needed to contact each other um, to, to get together and to figure out how they were going to work with each other so that it, that doesn't fall on your shoulders. Um, once you have your teams together, then the kids and the parents working on with those teams, they can decide when they're going to practice, how they're going to do it. Um, where they're going to do it, how many times a week or um, weekly. So that that those the little tiny details, that's up to the parents and the coaches to figure out that I left that up to them because they know their schedules better than anybody else. So money and supplies, um, again, your team registration, if you paid last year, has already been paid. Um, 
supplies if you can get most schools that have had teams have science olympiad covered somewhere in their buildings with supplies for all of the um events so you might need permission to get into the building to get those materials out or make arrangements for curbside pickups like they've done for other um supplies the school's handing out shirts um all the schools have usually have team shirts um when I did it, the principal always paid for the shirts for me. Um, I didn't have to worry about it. So you have to, again, contact the principal um, or the administrator in your building and find out how that worked. There's um, always uh, some shirts have, have um, like sponsors where, uh, you know, a, a local business sponsored them and paid for the shirts and then their name, the name of the business was on the shirt. So that's another way to get your shirts. Yes, if you don't have the, the money, um, contact a business and maybe they'll they'll give you the money. Um, your supplies, again, materials from the previous years. Um, I used school materials. If there's materials in the school that you I can will be can pick up and use. You know, like balances and scales and things that you might like, need for different events. So again, you you probably have to contact somebody at the school so that it can be picked up. Um, is the library open? I'm, I'm no. not sure. Not libraries closed still. I don't believe it's open. You're talking about the uh, Clinton Home Library? Yeah. Yeah, I don't believe it is. Okay. Yeah, because you the library is also a great resource if it was open. Macomb Co Community College used to open its um doors so the kids could practice anatomy there. They would let them use the um, materials there. So I'm not sure if those are open. Um, nature centers, I don't know. You'll have to check if you have friends or family that are very um, in tune to what you're, you're coaching. You might ask them for help. Uh, websites, again, look at the county website. You might find information you need on the county website. Um, so you're going to have to be a little bit more resourceful in figuring out how to get some of your materials. But first, contact, once you have your team, contact your school and get the materials from the school that that they used from Science Olympiad in previous years, because that's the that's the first place to start. And then you can fill in the gaps from there of what you need. I would also speak with last year so that we only have one team who is a brand new team. So every other team had a head coach last year, right? So uh, I would be asking that individual for advice about where to find resources that are available in, in terms of what the team already has. Uh, also, we are in contact uh, as Macomb Science Olympiad with uh, the local nature traditional provided workshops. Uh, and at this point, things are a bit up in the air, but we will uh, keep that information posted on our website as we learn it. Uh, these are just a couple examples of um, some of the shirts that you've seen. We've seen around the county competition in years past. Um, so this just gives you an idea. Again, money. Um, the school sometimes has, most of the time, has a budget set aside for um, the um, Science Olympiad. You might be able to get money from your PTO businesses for donations. Um, Coaches, I'd like, if you to, I'd like to recommend that Walmart store to go to to, to apply. Uh, my wife's uh, high school team can fairly reliably get money from from Walmart as a as a uh, sponsor. So oh, okay. if you're thinking about going to a business donation, that would be one at where a place that I would start. Okay, didn't know that. Um, in the past, when if my event coaches purchased anything. I would collect the receipts and submit them to the school. So you'll have to double check to see if how your school does that. If your individual coaches purchase things, I know like um, they might have needed um, some wood to build ramps for crash cart or just um, or a book that was not a, they didn't have from last year. Um, so make sure you know what your budget is and how that's going to work for your individual schools. So you yeah. know, so you're not stuck paying everybody back. And the coach, that we had one situation in my district where the coach, this was actually middle school science Olympiad, and they were 
coaching a robotic event and there was lots and lots of stuff that they bought and it wasn't cheap. And I guess this, this coach ended up spending like $500 on all the equipment wow. that they needed expecting to get reimbursed, but there wasn't that much money in the account. So you might have to keep an eye on that too. If there's anything that's extra expensive, you know, make sure the coach knows that, yeah. you know, how much money you have and whether you're going to be able to pay for it. Yeah. Cause you don't, like I said, you don't want to be stuck having to pay your coaches back. <laughs> Could get costly. Um, the event rules, um, it says do not use past year's rules. Always look when you're on the page on the on the web, macombso.org, there's, the, there's a tab for rules. Make sure you're um, looking at the 2021 rules and they have all been updated because the rules do change from year to year. Again, you can refer um, the video, there's videos for the, each of the events and um, the, there's, all kinds of information about the events on the um, on the website. Um, before there will be a virtual coach meeting in January. Um, before you your coaches attend this meeting, make sure they have the rules for the event that they're coaching, so they know um, what they're coaching. And then they'll if when they if they know what they're coaching and they watch the virtual meeting. They, they'll know what questions to ask if they have questions and if they don't have the materials they need. So you might want to get their materials too before they go to the meeting so they know what materials they have and what materials they might need. But that you'll want to get that to your individual coaches before the virtual coach meeting that will be in January. So in the, in the time period between now and then, it's like for the next two months, uh, the status of the website now is, as you mentioned, it does have the current rules posted. It, the resources that were distributed at the event coach training a year ago posted and they're marked as 2020 and those that particular resource for many events won't get updated until we have the event coach training this year and so they won't they're probably very valuable but uh, because the rules haven't really changed since last year but uh, we will we will be updating those and new items that the head coach event supervisors provide us. But at the moment, those resources are outdated from last year. So when once the schedule for the virtual training um, is finalized, it will be posted on the website so your coaches will know what time their sessions will be. The, um, the slide I just put up was our past, was what um, this, the event used to when we were in person. That's what the schedule looked like. There was a couple sessions um, and I believe are these going to be recorded? So if they can't make them that day, they can see them another time. Yes. OK, so they'll be recorded. So you'll just have to watch for that information um, to come. Again, um, this is what I would use to recommend to my my um, teams. But it's going to depend on your teams, your kids, how comfortable they are with each other, with getting together. Um, to be successful, practicing once a week was was pretty much the normal um, and additional practices whenever they were possible. Um, I don't I used to use school, the school and the libraries, but now they're again. You might have to, you know, work with kids that are in a bubble together that socialize on a regular basis so that um, and then maybe virtual after they're comfortable with each other, as John had suggested. Um, but um, again, it's going to you have to play play it by ear and figure out what works best for your team and your kids. And where um, it's to reserve appropriate rooms that was um you know like uh if uh, ping pong propulsions you might need a taller ceiling than what you would have at home or in a classroom so you know i would have to reserve the gym for the kids to practice that particular event in or some uh, uh you well, need it yeah it, it would also be for like for ping pong propulsion too 
Do you need a carpeted floor or do you need a tiled floor? So you had to consider that too. So for that one might be a little more tricky finding a place to to, to practice that one because you do need a bigger area. Um, again, this the circumstances are going to make it a little more challenging, but it can be done. Um, you just they'll just have to make the best of it. If you have somebody that has a big office f space facility or a warehouse where your kids can go to practice, you might um, have to be a little more resourceful in figuring out some of the these these things. Um, I, I like that comment. You know, asking your team for to help, right? All the members of your team to say, hey, this is what we need. We'd be creative about where we could find a, a room that has a high enough ceiling. So that's yeah. a great idea. Um, the best uh, school teams were the teams that did study and practice together um, and and kept and I would give practice tests to my my kids when I was was a event coach. You can find some of uh, um, of those things on the website. Um, a lot of the times, the um, the, ki the um, events they're set up as stations, and the kids only have a certain amount of time at each station. Um, so that's like a pressure time. So if you're coaching with your kids, or you might want to suggest this to your coach, to set up little stations and give them the thirty seconds or the one minute, and say move thirty seconds, one minute, move to the next station, so they get used to that. Start, stop, start, stop, move. Um, around so when it comes to the day of the competition they're not like a deer in the headlights and like oh we're not standing here taking the test we have to move um, another thing get them used to when they're taking tests when you're talking to your coaches suggest to your coaches um, what are they the zip what are the um, recording sheets called again zip, zip grade. what are they zip grade yeah the zip grades they're like they're a new version of scantrons um, for people that are old like me. Um, those are all the, on the website too. Yeah, and not all the kids start at question number one. When they go in, they're put at a station, and it might not be question number one. You're, you're going to have to coach your kids and your parents to coach your kids to look at the station they are, mark it on their sheet so that when they start marking, they're marking in the correct spot because there's nothing more heartbreaking than kids coming out that know the information inside and out but have bombed because they started at question one and they weren't at question one. So that's that's something they really need to watch um, is because I've seen it happen and it's very heartbreaking. Um, when they've when they've done that and um, I've seen kids fall apart when they the the time pressure so they they really do need to those are the things you don't think about it's not just the information they have to learn how to take the tests and move around from to the stations and because these these tests are designed to be hard because you have so many teams competing you don't want easy tests you don't want everybody getting 100% they are going to be hard and you're going to want to especially if you have new kids on your team stress that these tests are going to be hard they just need to do their very best so you brought up some some important points on the uh, on the distinction between what it's like to take the test versus um, practicing for the event and i want i want to i want to repeat some of that in the sense that when you're starting your season and your, your event coaches are working with the kids, the focus is primarily on helping them understand the material. And it might be focused more on understanding how each of the students are understanding the material individually. And how you practice with students in that environment is different than what you're thinking about when you're trying to get them ready to compete. And thinking more about the questions of do they understand the zip grade and do they know their role you know, how are the two students going to cooperate uh, when they're actually at the tournament? Yeah, some of some of the, the um, events really do need cooperation. And because I take the pictures and I'm in the events when the kids are working, you have some teams that work really well together and you have some teams that are not so not so good. Um, <laughs> to put it, so one, you might have one child doing all the work and one looking at all the posters hanging on walls. Um, so you do want kids to learn to work together too. Um, 
it's not just about learning and the information. That is the important part, but it's learning how to work together and to go in and take that test because it's different than being in school where you're sitting at your desk. Um, I don't know what online is right now. I'm glad I don't have to find out, but it's 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 different. It's a different ball game um, than a normal everyday school assignment. So important dates, the November date for registration has passed. The event coaches training is going to be determined. Um, yeah, I, oh, yeah, it's not at the high school. It's online. Yeah, the course, the yes. Registrations. Uh, we the November nineteenth deadline was uh, was set so that we would get teams that thought they wanted to participate to register so that we could also determine if we had space for schools that wanted second teams. So that date has passed, but we do still have space in our tournament. Um, we uh, and so teams will be allowed to register until we run out of the forty five slots that the that the schedule. <laughs> Okay, I did say, mention that at the beginning that you could probably still register. Good. Okay, and then the county tournament is May fifteenth, so you're going to want to make sure that 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 date is in your notes and communications with your parents. And make sure the kids are aware that they are yours that day. So yeah, I'm sorry if you have a baseball tournament or something going on that day, but if you're making a commitment to Science Olympiad. That means you can't commit to anything else that same day. So and that's, yeah, so and let, that's me, let, me, uh, let me comment a little bit on that. Our tournament this year is going to be very different. And so there's going to be, um, so for instance, let's say a student has two events. There will be two times when they will be expected to be on the Macomb campus. And you should plan that they'll need to be there for about an hour between the extra logistics of getting them in and out of the buildings and things like that. Uh, but those are the only two hours of the day that we actually want them on campus this year. So this is a, a very different world. Normally, uh, it is this world. You should expect to be there all day. Don't don't double book anything. Uh, you People will know far in advance which hours of the day they need to be on the Macomb campus. And I think it's up to them to make sure that they're that they're there and present because we won't have extra opportunities for them to take tests. Uh, but it might be that they're that they're two two times are nine o'clock in the morning and ten o'clock and then they have the rest of the day. So it's a very different year. Yeah, so if you've had team had students that are on your team that have participated in the past, that's that's one of the things you will have to explain to them um, that they're only there to take their to, for their event and their leave because it used to be you were there all day. So that's that will be something different for kids that are returning to your team. So just make sure, especially for the, the returning kids, that they know that's different this year. So John, there's an award ceremony. So how do we know how we're going to take care of announcing winners? It will be some type of an online announcement. So let me also say, if something magic happens between now and say March and suddenly this pandemic goes away, we would probably pivot and try to put together a normal tournament. But I think that's like a 1% probability. So the, what we've all been saying is, you know, a socially distanced tournament where students are only on campus when they need to be is, is the right thing to expect. And we will uh, be publishing the results online and I, we haven't figured out the exact details of the format. Of, um, oh, we're committing. Oh. It, it might. It might not be until the following day, even. But I'm hopeful that even we by 6 p.m. Uh, the day of the tournament, or by the evening of the same day, we would be able to publish uh, the results online. This is just a map of the college. And again, this can be found on the website as well. This is what we used to use. We used to use the whole campus, but that's going to be different this year. Are they most they're still going to get the events will be in the in the uh, P building or the this SEC. If you want to just back up a page for a brief moment. Uh, most of the events will be either in the P building, which you see uh, toward the south end. Uh, we call that the Sports and Expo Center as well. Uh, a good number of events will be in the K building in the middle of campus. 
and there might be a couple uh, that are in other uh, rooms, like uh, Crime Busters is likely to be in the B building. Um, but that's the science building, right? It's it's one of the ones up toward the north. You can see that it's got a B uh, marked on it. Yeah. Uh, so most events will be in the K building in the center of campus and the P building. And we will be uh, not allowing uh, parents to enter those buildings. Uh, we will ask uh, students to queue at an outside door. It'll be very explicitly uh, announced to where to show up uh, and where to pick up your students. So uh, you should expect to get that information uh, as we get closer to tournament day. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, well, this information, uh, you, they'll get wristbands, um, but again, like John said, the kids are only allowed in the buildings during their scheduled time without parents, and there won't be anything else on campus. So this one we can pretty much disregard right now. Um, advertising and making it a big deal. Um, if you're, well, they don't, they're not in school for morning announcements, but if the principals put out Facebook messages, you can have them start putting out Facebook messages to generate your interest in your science Olympiad. Um, Cause I know at the school where I taught, I see Facebook, I get see the Facebook messages. So you might, again, you're gonna have to contact your administrators and you're gonna have to rely on their help getting information out to the students um, that for interest in science Olympiad because they're not in school um, right now. School probably school won't be until January. Yeah, the school website too. They can post pictures on the. the oh yeah, the web school website. Forgot about that. Yeah. So yeah, so I guess my first your first step is to contact your administrator and explain what you're doing and ask them, you know, for your help. Um. Hopefully by the end of the event, you can have a celebration. Um, I used to have a pizza party with my kids. Um, I found a pizza buffet places were the most cost effective. They could eat as much as they wanted and it didn't cost a lot. Um, but these were also some other ideas that other coaches had given me, but just celebrating your kids. You could still, even if you can't have a, um, a, a party of some sort, you can still, I ordered trophies. My kids got trophies for participating. You can still print off the certificates um, that are available on the website. I printed them for the kids and the coaches because it was an accomplishment for the coach too. Um, so you can still do some of the things and hopefully you can have um, your your out, your celebration maybe by the by the end of this. I would always have mine after school got out because as a teacher it was less, I enjoyed it a little more. You might even be able to have an outdoor celebration um, if need be at this point. So again, you want to celebrate because the kids do work hard. And a recap of your responsibilities. You're the one that organizes the the whole team, um, and you're the contact person for your your school's team. Um, volunteers, I'm not sure where we stand on volunteers this year. We're likely um, to, like we have in past years. So um, our, uh, our goal in recent years has been to try to uh, keep it to one per team rather than two. Uh, but we will, um, as we, we get farther in the season, we'll have um, more information on that. So the um, team expect they have to provide at least one volunteer. So again, keeping your coaches informed, I always told my coaches there's a spot you can sign up on the Macomb um, website for the, the coaches themselves to get email updates for their events. So they come right to the individual coaches rather than to you and then you sending out the emails to the coaches. If they sign up themselves, they'll get the, direct, the information directly when it's available. Um, I guess your periodic meetings with the whole team are going to be Zoom or team meetings um, at this point. And if you still have questions, um, you can contact me. My web, my um, email address is there. And um, I'd be happy to, if I don't know the answer, I'd be happy to find the answer for you. But again, it's a different time, but you, you can do it. And it's just gonna have to be done a little bit differently this year. 
And you go, it's worth it because you see all these happy faces. And I'm looking at the Mohawk team at the top. That was a long time ago. <laughs> Those kids. <laughs> Those kids yeah. are all out of college now. <laughs> now, this, uh, this PowerPoint is going to be posted on the website. So, you know, if you need uh, Jennifer's email address, it'll it'll be there if you didn't get a chance to write it down. So I you'll can. be able to pick it up again. Yeah, it's it's on the on the website. So, oh, that's it. So now let me see if I can click out of here. Do and we I have can... time to look at the uh, spend a few minutes looking at the website? I'm going to stress you out by seeing if you can find the website. I have my my computer coach right behind me. Ah, there I'm, we go. Okay. I think so. I want to go to the website. Can everybody see the screen? Hold on, I have my own personal tech person here. <laughs> I don't think we have the website up anymore. There it is. There we go. Oh, you can see it now? Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right, so this is the website. Um, and when you go there, you want to click on the elementary tab, um, which I already, it's already been clicked on. And so on the left, I, I go just ahead. Gonna inject here for a second. The elementary is always red. So if you find yourself on a blue page or I think it's green page, you know you're not in elementary. So elementary is, has, is all red. Yes, so that's where you want to stay. So this, when you click on the elementary, this is what you see uh, on the main page. And then on the left side of your screen, you see the calendar. So that gives you the calendar of events and the countdown to the tournament. And there's different places you can click here to get other information. Um, for those of you that have registered and or don't know if you've registered, there's a team's registration spot. Um, if you're a K-5 school, you click here, K-6 schools, or if you just want to find out how many teams are um, participating, you can look there. Um, again, here's questions. Again, questions and concerns. There's an um, email address right there for you to look at. The, let's see. If you want to check your team number, Oh, I just did that. I didn't click on the teams. There we go. Here's where we are right now with the teams. And then it the gives K you the district. Five. This is the K-5, yeah. So that's the K-5. I think Frazier is a K-6, right? So, yeah. Which Frazier school, Emerson. Sean? Emerson? Yeah, I already looked. I didn't see it on there. Well, is there an... Is there an registered, you registered about an hour ago, so I'm quite that oh, fast. Okay, so you're sl you're slacking. Okay. Well, All right. Come on, John. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Sean, your your team should be res registered or on there soon. Um, again, there's a resource button, and you can find different resources. Um, there's videos. This is happens to be Chippewas. Tips for coaches. Um, again, valuable information on on the website. When you come researches, you get coaches, your head coach tools. There's past tournament scores, um, event supervisor, their district tests. Some of the tests are posted, and you can go and that you can get information from those tests to help your help your kids out. So you do have to this, be careful of those though, because some of them are a little old, but they're yes. still a good test. Yeah. Yeah, we always make sure you're using this year's rules because here it says 2021 events and rules. Um, so you could, and it will give you each of the set of the rules. So you click on, and it gives you information. You can download the current um, world rules. Um, there's a study guide for you, and here's a zip grade. 
I can never remember what that is, the name of it. But again, these are things you're going to want to tell you, show your coaches too, so that they can find this information and download the zip grades and the rules and information for themselves to use with the individual um, events. Anything I missed on here, Ruth? On um, the whole website, is that what you're talking about? Yeah, is there anything, I mean, that I should point out that I didn't specifically? Um, Oh, the schedule. I can show them what the schedule looks like. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. So there's the schedule. It looks a lot simpler than the one with all the other. And if you click, it will give you a printer friendly version and you can um, print that off too. So you need to know your team number for this to make sense. Because right now, if you don't know your team number, you have no idea where your school falls on this. So yeah. your first thing is find your team number and then go to the schedule and figure out where you are. Yeah, that's the most important thing is know what team number you are. So you you are looking at the right times. So unlike past years, every team in the tournament this year has the same conflicts because the schedule is so simple. So if you scroll up, um, it should should agree with the uh, directions so to the, for the text above. Oh, you um, want this? Yeah, so I posted the explicit conflicts that are in that in that schedule. So every team will find that stars conflicts with graphs and charged up conflicts with anatomy. And so those are the pairings that every head coach needs to avoid. Uh, now, next year, when you come back again and you're a head coach again, your life will be a little more complicated than this. But for this year, it's a, it's a pretty straightforward combination. And uh, unlike, we will have more events that are handled as a schedule. So if you don't see the event listed here in this table of those those 12 events, the other four events are gonna be handled as a self schedule and we will guarantee uh, that we will avoid the conflict that your students have. Yeah, it says, you'll see that it says in there, um, schedule the slot. If um, like ping pong, bridging the gap, and water rockets you're scheduling your own times and when will they start hearing that john uh we won't we won't do that probably and uh, we'll do that as part of the final registration process so that'll be uh in probably in april okay you practice with your kids assuming you're going to be able to get you know, you, there's probably two or three or times that your kids will be able to get together to do that event. So then you'll have to make sure you know which times are the kids available and, uh, you know, sign up for one of those times when the kids are available for that event. Can you uh, go to the schedule again? I'd just like to comment on a, something that's not maybe not obvious. So when you look at the event rules, what you'll see is every one of the events, don't go to the event rules here, just stay on the schedule. Okay. When, when coaches are reading the event rules, what you're going to see is that the approximate time that's listed for each event says 30 minutes. But what you see in the schedule is we've scheduled 50 minutes for each of these events in the tournament schedule this year. Uh, and that's to allow us more for the logistics of bringing students in and out of the buildings, uh, to making sure that we have time to uh, clean things and, and reset uh, between events. So uh, for our socially distanced tournament, uh, the schedule no longer is 30 minutes per session. It now says 50 minutes. The rules still say 30 minutes. And so we, what we will do is that each week gets that 30 minute test taking time uh, for their event, even though there's 50 minutes on the schedule. So if you're team 16 and you're in anatomy, you're going to show up at 9 o'clock, correct? My expectation is that you will be asking people to have queued up the door no later than 9 a.m. So that at 9 a.m. we open the door and say, all the A for anatomy students, please come inside. Right? It'll be something like that. And, and then we will... Uh, they will be returned to either that same location or another very specific door on the same building where they will be 
released, and we will have some protocols for making sure that we're not releasing students uh, where parents aren't picking them up. So those are some details we need to work out, but uh, we won't just turn to the wind, um, but it will be, you'll be picking them up at the door. So they all have to be there at the start time. So they're getting their 30 minutes because if they come in late, they're not going to get. So if they come in at 910, they're not going to be allowed to go to 940 testing, taking their tests. Correct? Yeah, our, like normal, our normal approach in, in, in normal years is to, uh, it's up to the head coach, whether students or not the head coach, but the event supervisor, whether students can come in late. Uh, we haven't talked about how to handle that protocol in this new environment. Uh, but we'll so we'll probably uh, spend some time thinking about how we would handle such a such a situation. Um, if for some reason, you got stuck in traffic. My advice is plan it. You know, plan to be there a few minutes early. Right. That's that's the right advice for for every uh, team. Is you know don't don't plan to show up at the last second. Well, that in the past it was. I know that they they get thirty minutes. So if they showed up late, they were allowed whatever time was left. They, the event supervisor, whether they would allow students to come in, it was common. It's common for the event supervisor to do their best to accommodate the student, um, but it's it's up to the event supervisor. Yes. Okay. All right. Are there questions to people who are on the the head coaches? We've been talking at them a lot. Hey, hey, John, this is Sanjay. I just had a quick question. Uh, you had mentioned uh, for the mock tournament, uh, you might not do it, but you might do one event. Can you clarify that real quick? Yeah, for the practice tournament, we, as Jennifer had mentioned, normally we end up having like four of them to cover all the all the teams because we want all the teams experience or a common opportunity. Um, and this year, um, because of the smaller tournaments, uh, number of teams that we have, as well as um, to try to protect our event supervisors, um, we would be looking for a venue that would allow us to do one event that would be available to all teams. Um, so for the team uh, attending the South, uh, the South Macomb tournament, it might feel very similar to that in the sense that it's a, a mix of schools and things like that. For the other, uh, let's see, we've got, so for Emerson, it would probably feel like a very normal situation for you. For Westmore, um, it would be very different. It would be a moment where actually your team would get to compete co competitively rather than just having a practice uh, session like Utica normally runs. But I will, this is uh, all just wishful thinking at the moment because we don't have a venue uh, confirmed and a date at this point that we know that can work. Uh, and right now is the wrong time to ask that question uh, of, of facilities because all the only thing we'll get right now is no. <laughs> so uh, we're I, we're trying to be patient a little bit as well. And but we would let you know in advance. We would be trying to put that uh, event in March. Uh, one. A uh, thought that I've had is to uh, talk to the college about letting us possibly go on the first weekend in April, right after their their shutdown. Um, has, uh, the downside of that particular date is that it falls on the first Saturday of spring break. Uh, and so uh, that might not be ideal as well. Okay. But it's very much an open question at this point. Did I answer your question? Yes, you did. Thank you. Any other questions? Go ahead. You got to unmute. You might. There you go. I'm on. I'm on um, So we have a unique situation where um, we didn't get any of our materials back from last from the last year. Because the school was shut down, uh, no one had anywhere to take the items. I requested the items. And our team were fifth graders. They went off to the middle school. We have almost nothing. We're back to bare bones again. 
So we're probably going to end up with a tiny team only be able to uh, compete in a couple of events. Is that still permissible if we only have a couple kids and we only participate in a few events? Yeah, you, um, you, you just want the kids to have fun. So if you only mm -hmm. have a couple kids, they're going to go in knowing you probably you won't get a team award because oh, yeah. you need, no. but no, no. they can go in and they can do their best and participate in their events and try their best in their events and not worry about anything else and again talk to your principal too about starting from scratch and seeing if he can help find the funds to get you the materials I would start with the materials you're going to need for the kids that are participating this year with the events they're participating and then slowly ask if you can start building and getting the uh, materials for other events. So if you continue on next year and hopefully have a full team, then you'll have the materials you need and not have to wait till next year and be uh, obviously upset about not having materials. But have you spoken no. with the head coach from last year? I was the head coach last year. Oh. We just didn't get to compete at all because the pra our practice tournament was obviously canceled and then obviously the main one was canceled. What's your name, son? So mm -hmm. the families that that have your materials, they all disappeared? Um, well, we had a nice team of a lot of fifth graders, which was going to be fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> But they've all moved on to the middle school, and seems um, seems nobody really wants to. Uh, we, I've had some teams that were honest and said, "Oh, we threw it away. It was in." The bad part is, is all the couple of years of experience that went into those books and went into the materials and went into everything. It's all gone. So. Oh my goodness. I feel your pain. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, and then um, trying to get trying to get people interested when, like I said, most of the team was gone. It's gone now. So now we're dealing with trying to get uh, what were third and fourth graders last year. We didn't have a ton of them. Trying to get them back interested. It's just not been. It's just, it's just not going to be good. So we're going to have a super small team. Super well, small. <laughs> you know, too, that we are making quick start kits for some of the events. For for example, Charged Up and Crime Busters, you can purchase the quick start kit. And that really is everything you need to coach and, you know, to learn that event. So if you're only going to have a few kids, you may want to steer them towards some of the events where you can get the supplies fairly easily. Right. Yeah, that's, yeah, I'm thinking water bottle rocket for that in the future. Um, ping pong propulsion probably isn't either. So uh, probably a lot of the study ones will be our, our good ones this year. <laughs> so. yeah, well, there's a, there's a quick start kit for ping pong propulsion too. So, yeah. So, you know, take a look at what kits are going to be available. And I'm assuming that's on the website somewhere. Um, and you know, and that, that could be a, a start for you because you'll have the materials there. Right. How how are we going to end up getting the kits? Will we end up picking them up from somewhere? To get the quick start kits? To get any of the kits that we would order. We would just, we would have to go to a designated location and pick them up at a certain time or? Yeah, well, I think we're still working out the logistics of that. We'll, we'll get that figured out. Something that we forgot to mention here, too, is being part of this virtual workshop right now, you do get um, you do get a, a voucher for a free um, quick, quick start kit. kit. Oh, so, okay. So there's one kit right there that we'll, you'll get. Yeah. So. And my advice is, you want to use your voucher for the most expensive kit. Right. That, that, only makes, uh, that makes financial sense for sure. Yeah. So Did you mention that we are offering a discount for teams that order early? Oh, I didn't mention that. How early is early? So before midnight on December 15th, all kits are 10% off. And before January 15th, all kits are 5% off. No, I, John, I saw that in an email. Is that also on the website? Uh, yes, it is. Well, I think so. No, I'm, no, I'm not sure. 
<laughs> well, if it's not, it'll be there soon. I'll coach it again. Do you want me to toggle back to the website? Uh, that's okay. I'll send an announcement to all the coaches. Okay. Anything else? Again, don't worry about it. If you only have three kids, you have three kids, and you'll have three happy kids because they're competing and they're working hard, and that's all you can do right now. These are just, but my advice for next, going into next year, I always had a team that had third, fourth, and fifth graders on it, so you weren't left with nobody when they, so then the fifth graders helped with the third graders, so I had a consistent I had, so I was only losing a few kids every year. So I recruited more third graders every year, third and fourth graders, so that I had kids for a few years rather than all fifth graders. So that uh, you would have had an awesome team because, yeah, you're right. All the fifth graders, you probably would have kicked everybody's butt. <laughs> so, <laughs> but going into the future, that's how that's how I always um, set up my team. So I had third, fourth and fifth graders. And my fifth graders were like my mentors to my third graders. Anything else? Are we good for the night then? I think we are. Okay. Again, if you go to the website and find the PowerPoint, my um, email address is, is there. Mm -hmm. So feel free to reach out if you have any questions. I will be, like I said, if I don't know the answer, I'll be happy to find it for you. Okay. Thank you guys. Good night. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you yep. so very much. You're welcome. Have a good night.